Hello, I'm Joshua, and I'm an INTP, and first and foremost, I would like to say thank you for viewing this video, and thank you for subsequently view visiting my channel. Uh, first, to say a preface before I jump into the topic of this video, is that um, post this video, I will be on a very long hiatus by way of my semester and the workload that I have right now in school and the uh, necessary responsibilities that I have to take care of. Uh, when I return, I will return with a series on the 16 types of uh, Jungian typology. Until then, this will be the last video I make for quite a while. And as this being my last video, this will be a topic that I will not speak about again. I made a video previously on Christianity and I explained why I am not interested in the debate of the existence of God and why I am pro-secular per se. Not necessarily why, but my stance as being pro-secular and being an atheist. Now, I have not ever given defense and I'm not really going to give a defense in this video for my beliefs. However, I have received several emails uh, messages on private messages on YouTube and Google Plus receiving criticism and questions and so um, I see quite often times also comments that I have uh, been a part of on YouTube just things said so frequently and often and things being brought issues being brought to my attention and claims and assertion of contentions being made towards me for what I believe and what I think. And I will first say this, that there are many misconceptions on atheism out in the world. And I happen to be a science major who is an atheist, but atheism and science are not synonymous insofar as correlation is not causation. Just because I'm a scientist, that does not make me an atheist. And there is no complete body or organizational body on the beliefs of a secularist or an atheist. And I don't necessarily consider myself an atheist. I give myself that description so that anybody can generally understand the general tenets to my beliefs. But I would consider myself an existentialist and a secular humanist. I am an existentialist first and I'm a secular humanist secondarily, per se. I'm concerned with human existence and then helping uh, human beings find meaning and purpose in life. That is tied into existentialism, but I think existentialism rises from secular humanism. I am a secular humanist, but I identify more as an existentialist as there are psychological and spiritual reasons for one versus the other that I'm not going to go into in great detail but it's to say this that you may be an atheist and find yourself being not a secular humanist or an existentialist you may find yourself being an atheist and being some sort of other variety of something or not claiming anything at all not being concerned with scientific fact not being concerned with philosophy not being concerned with morality, not being concerned with ethics, not being concerned with anything per se other than one's own existence and them just living out their life. Atheism is a negation. It is not necessarily an assertion. Though there are prominent atheists out there such as Richard Dawkins who says there is no such thing as God and there was the late Christopher Hitchens who said, uh, who spoke of the what he coined the God delusion per se or God is not great. There are those who assert certain claims, but do not allow that to be a representation of the totality of the negated belief system because it is not a positive claim. It is a negative claim in saying that there is not sufficient evidence or there is not sufficient reason for me to believe in any supernatural or paranormal phenomenon, so I do not. It is not to say that my position won't change. Or cannot change it is that I have not seen nor encountered anything 
that would cause me to think and believe differently. And trust me, if anybody's listened to the videos I've made, I know quite a bit of mythological facts, and I know quite a bit about uh, theology and other uh, religions. It's not that I've not investigated these things. I have. There's nothing I've found that's convinced me of anything, really, other than other things. And that is for what it is. And that's what I'll say for it, but primarily to say this, that there is no organized body of religion in atheism. People equate uh, religion and atheism and say that they are equal, but they are not equal things at all, as there is no papacy, there is no, there are leaders in the secular community such as Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett and uh, Richard Dawkins, but there are leaders and they are not patron saints and they are not writers of doctrine. There is no dogmatic structure that anyone has to follow explicitly nor will there be any penalization if someone does not get with any belief system or agree with a, a collection of propositions. There are atheists that are Hegelians. There are atheists that are um, Socratics, uh, Sophists. There are there there are a mix of uh, Platonics, Platonist. Uh, Thinkers of Neo uh, Platonicism or Neoplatonism, there is a great diversity, and it's not like a, they're not like sex, in so far as that if you're a Baptist or a uh, Presbyterian or a uh, whatever what have you, that there is the central tenet in everyone's belief. There is no central tenet. In every atheist beliefs, there are general things that some of them might believe, but that's one group. And then you go and find another individual who believes something radically different. There are many atheists that are uh, nihilistic or nihilistic, and I don't like nihilism, but that's where they live. I refuse to live there. This is to say that there is just this great um, diversity and uh, divergence in the beliefs. For it not to be a collective belief system, though it is gaining popularity within America and is growing ever increasingly in the European sphere and in the and primarily in the Western sphere, that it is not an organized religion and um, it is not a positive assertion. And this is a logical notion that is not a positive assertion. It is not a saying that there is the existence of something or that there is this, or that there is that, it is saying that it is uncertain, or it does not know, or it disavows, does not agree with, doesn't know, or is uncertain. Those are the three, those are the three degrees that you will find, and oftentimes uncertainty is classified as agnosticism, and I won't say I'm an agnostic, because I am certain of certain things. Some, some things I'm certain of. Most things I'm not certain of, and there's not a great deal of certainty in my world. However, I am certain of a few things. And I, or at least, I am willing to trust those things enough to make conclusions about the world or about things from the basis of their existence. And that is the closest thing I can say I have to faith. When people say that atheists have faith, just like, or I don't have enough faith to be an atheist, I find that utterly absurd. Because I will say that I am limited in my knowledge. I cannot know everything, and every proposition I accept, though I test all of them uh, rigorously, it, and there's a great deal of deliberation that goes on in my mind logically, I cannot empirically validate everything that I hold as a proposition that I use. There is some there are some bodies of uh, information that I do have to trust. I can go by way of quantitative reasoning and mathematical assessment, and I do that with things in science and facts. I can go to the papers and the statistics and know how they get the numbers and essentially compare them to see if the numbers I'm coming up with are the ones that match them. It's not a hubris on my part, but just one of being uh, stringent. I know I'm mathematically inclined and uh, have taken a uh, calculus-based statistics, and have taken a statistical course, 
and a, a scientific research method course to be able to get a rough idea if what this person is saying is, is valid or not. And uh, that's the point of a peer review process also, to be stringent with the data that's coming out. It's not to say that there's not uh, bad data out there and that there's not um, contemptible scientific uh, papers out there and that there's not contemptible bodies that pose as scientific bodies of knowledge. It's not to say that they're not out there, but they're in, greater, they're in less frequency and it is much more irregular to find something like that in science and or at least within the heart of science and that is not some pop science or pipes pop psychological movement per se pushed by somebody who's taken scientific information and facts and morphed it to something else or used it for some purpose to come to some is or ought within the world without just leaving it as the statistical body of evidence as it served or they, it was a misrepresentation and misuse of facts there is not to say that there's not an er there's not error in science, but there is a strong system to mitigate error. And though I cannot trust and not know with a hundred percent certainty what I think and every proposition I collect is completely true because it is fact and there is that flippancy in s in some respects with facts, does not mean that there is the same type that trust is the same as faith. The reason trust is not the same as faith, in my estimation, is that everything that science is based off of tries to its greatest extent to disavow sub the subjective uh, agency within people. It does not want to account subjectivity, but it wants to be as objectively uh, accurate as it possibly can. Therefore, it says what is Quanti only the only thing of relevance and importance is what is quantifiable. Anything that's not quantifiable is not important. What you cannot know comparatively cannot be assumed or not not assumed. It's not that people don't make assumptions. It's just to say that it cannot be accepted as empirical fact, and that the basis of knowledge that we have, at least that I have as a scientist, is grounded in the in the material world. Some people damn that, and they don't like that, but it is grounded in the material world. At least what I am going off of can be scrutinized and measured to some extent. I find it absolutely absurd when a theologian says I have faith, when the fundamental tenets to the propositions that I hold are not at all, that well, excuse me, are mostly, if not completely, grounded in... Um, the physical reality. What is not grounded in the physical reality is in the basis of uh, logical intuition or just intuition. If somebody doesn't want to describe it as logical intuition, we made a leap and we said the leap was that we need to measure things and compare things by way of what we can uh, get data from or what we can measure and that is what we will use to determine things and not what we cannot measure, not what we can't quantify. There certainly was a leap, and there was a disavowal of certain bodies of knowledge, but it is what led us to scientific inquiry, and scientific inquiry has substantiated itself in its results in so far as a pragmatic lens. It's not to say that what is practically, um, what practically manifests itself in the world is necessarily uh, absolute and true. There's a limitation, and I'm not saying scientific fact is absolute truth. I'm saying it is scientific fact, but it is fact based on uh, empirical uh, inquiry nonetheless, to where that is where the central propositions that are in my belief system are founded upon. It is ultimately rest upon intuition and is fuzzy at the ground level, like uh, one would say faith is. I will concede that, that there is a um, body of ignorance and a level and depth that I can't really know for certain is there, that it's just no certainty. However, when the central tenets of your beliefs are ones that come derived from uh, paranormal 
revelatory experiences, do not talk to me about faith. I may trust things, but I don't have faith. And I don't even really trust things necessarily in my own volition. I am skeptical fundamentally, but I know that I don't have a faith in something. I do think things, and I do have a trust in things, and I have a leaning towards things, and I have an inclination here, and an inclination there, and a thought here, and a thought there. But it is all very rather um, sporadic and not well aggregated or collected. I do it to the best extent I can insofar as having uh, soundness in my belief structures. But there are holes, per se, because I don't go for certainty, as I don't have a great deal of belief in certainty, though my psyche greatly values it. Because I'm an INTP and I'm an introverted thinker, so I like certainty. That's why I tend towards logic, and I like logic. But I know the flaw of uh, logical, um, at least categorical logic insofar as that it is one based off a of form and not the soundness of its premises. And I'll explicate what I mean about that later, but it's to say this, that your major, that a theologian or any spiritually believing person, one that takes and submits their beliefs on any metaphysical or paranormal reality says that they accept what they accept by way and sources of things that cannot be accessed or scrutinized outside of a very, very small and fuzzy subjective scope is by one's own personal experience and revelatory uh, excitation that they can receive a message from God per se, but it's not as if the entire world at one time can lift up their hands or lift up their voices to the sky and say, make yourself known and God or whomever does it per se. And there's whatever reasons that people say that any deity doesn't need to do that and won't do that because they're too great and too grand. Fine, I'll give you that, but you can't scrutinize it. You can't access it. There is a great deal of opaqueness and um, vagueness and mystery enshrouded within it. The mystery that exists in reality for the empirical individual is one by way of his ignorance, but not one by way of the design of his propositions. It's not like I want to be ignorant, but it is a condition of existence. However, the picture for the believer is one of paranormal reality or supernatural reality. Reality that it extends beyond this one and that has no direct tie and linkage to the one that has dimensions and can be measured. The main proposition of uh, validity in Christianity per se that they have to base things off of is that there was a virgin birth and that there was a resurrection of a God who became man. I'm not trying to pick on a belief per se, but I am saying this. If you're saying I have faith because I can see very clearly with domesticated animals that we did not start with domesticated animals that people over time selected for certain traits and created new species because you can't mate a chihuahua with a wolf and get a viable species. You can't do it with Dalmatians. Domesticated dogs, unless it's huskies and very um, certain breeds per se, cannot be mated with wolves per se, the thing that they came from because they differ completely in their genetic structure. Same thing with uh, domesticated cats. You can't get a domesticated cat to be mated with certain other um, uh, genuses of feline out in the um, feral reality or nature because genetically they are completely different things. They have similarities and they have a common uh, ancestry, but they are not the same things. And I can see that I don't even need to necessarily... Um, Read that in a textbook. You can you can look at the 
pet in your own um, home, per se, and know that uh, the rat or the hamster or the dog or the cat or the bird or whatever you own, unless it's exotic, is not a, any kind of direct representation of its ancestral past. It has been uh, moved by way of human ingenuity and influence, but through sexual selection and natural selection over time to the existence and appearance it has right now. That is a proposition that's in my belief system, and it can be verified on many, many platforms with different types of evidence per se. I don't have to just look at it. I don't have to look at history per se, because you can very tr much track the breeding record of most uh, species of dogs and see that where they came from. You may can't, you maybe can't do it as, stringent, as stringently and concretely with people as there are missing hominid species, but you can very much see with the breeding of dogs where they came from and track their evolutionary history essentially, and definitely mark where the human uh, watermark came in and our thumbprint came in and created this uh, proliferation of diversification and speciation within this uh, phylum. But one, I don't have to necessarily be given that proposition to accept it. If I want to go out and find out for myself or want to go out and see it in the world, I can do that. I can even give it, I can even scrutinize it and really test its validity. I can really test to the best of my human capacity to see if that's true or not. You cannot test to see if a bir virgin birth is true or not. You can't test it. You have to accept it. I don't have to necessarily accept anything that I believe. I have, well, I trust or I think. I can, you can call it a belief if you want to, and I will grant you that. But to say that I have faith, I find that fundamentally absurd. They're not equal things. It's to say this, that if a stimulus rises from an internal source, you cannot, one, you can have this, you can have about this much certainty, and I will say it's like a 5% certainty. You can't be certain that you exist. And you can't be certain that the objective world is there. But so long as you can act on it, you can be certain that whatever subjective you ex experience you have is acting on something. Whether or not that something is contained within one's consciousness or not, there is an interplay and there is a dialogue that can happen with the thing independent of one's own volition. And what I mean is this. If you jump off of a building... You do not have to suddenly talk to gravity. It's going to talk for you. You don't have to see if you're comprised of matter and if the same, if basic uh, Newtonian mechanical principles won't act on you in the same way as it will act on a ball, which is comprised of matter. Necessarily, one can take and then turn the lens back to themselves and say, therefore, I must be made of matter. But it's what one can say is at least practically... What acts on it acts on me. There must be some similarity in the basis of what it is and what I am. Logically, I can make that connection. If someone else isn't safe with that or someone else doesn't find that valid, then fine. But I will say this. You cannot, by anything that you've experienced, and I know not many people make miracle claims. Some people say they've seen miracles. And I, okay, whatever, you've seen miracles. You may have seen miracles. You may have experienced them. You may even uh, have heard a divine voice. But you do not have any way to verify and test that outside of your own subjective experience and out of one uh, paranormal context and source that you cite as uh, truth, which is scripture, which can only, which is self-contained. It is completely self-contained. It's like the I don't anything I anything I trust and anything I think is not completely self-contained. There are things out in the world that will either uh, exalt it or uh, condemn it or deny it. It has a false ability to it. There is an infalsibility in many of the propositions that anyone who uh, is 
a believer of any kind has. I do exist in a world of uncertainty, and it is of sinking and shifting sands, if one wants to call it that, because there is no hat for me to essentially, uh, there is no place for me to hang my hat on and to say, you know what, I absolutely know, and I absolutely got it. However, I don't need any faith. I don't need faith. I need just maybe a 5% level of certainty that I can just at least with some conscious volition act on the world in such a way to produce some result that I can compare to another result that if I act on it in the same way, the same result re reproduces itself time and time again and that others can reproduce that are not me. That when others of their own differing subjective experience can reenact or act on the world in the same manner I can, I can at least say it's not a mass hallucination. I can at least say that. That there is something to be said about the emergence of this phenomenon in reality. There, the theologian cannot do that because the only thing that they can be certain of is their own subjective experience and they can validate that subjective experience with the um, self-contained information within scripture and with um, the uh, community that surrounds them. There is a scientific body, but does everybody in science need to agree with one another? No. It's like, that's what we have experimentation for. The numbers say, and the experimentation says, what people are going to agree on. We don't get to decide that for ourselves. And it's to say that, one, that's not even what all atheists opt or agree to believe in. There's atheists that don't like science. Atheism is not a belief. And an atheist does not have faith. They don't. There are some atheists that are ideologues. And I would say that that's a type of faith. I really would. I would agree with that. But that's not, that's not a general description of everybody. And there is no universality or under... Uh, un overarching belief structure that everybody fits under. There's many secularists who would like a greater um, level of accountability within the community and um, more fixed patterns of belief and expectancy. But dogmatization is a uh, crime and a banality per se in uh, the belief system of a lot of people. I'm not a dogmatist. I don't, I, I don't like it, per se. There, I'm trying to solidify things, but they may not become solidified in their totality, as life is very complicated, and there's many facets to reality. But it's to say this, that atheism is not a positive assertion. It's the rejection and the negation of something, and I don't have any faith, and I don't need to have any faith, and that there is no direct comparison between my uh, thoughts and my beliefs and yours. To say that they have the, um, say, that they come from the same, that they, they don't derive from the same source. They don't have the, uh, they don't have the same essential makeup. They are not even in the, it's, it's, they're not fruits and vegetables even. They are, they are ideas per se, but it's, it's the same as saying that trees and people can be compared on certain level of an, on a certain level of analyses, and they do have general uh, tints to them because they all fit under the cl under the classification of organism. But a tree is not a human being. A, a beliefs, a spiritual beliefs, are not the same as empirically based beliefs. They're not at all. They are, they are beliefs, per se, as in they're a collection of ideas and propositions that one cannot be completely certain of on every level. So if, you, that, if that's the definition you're going off of, which I will concede that, then yeah, you can call it a belief. But I don't think it's a belief, but whatever. You can say that. But to say that they're the same thing, they're not the same thing at all. You're just kidding yourself. And also... The nature and the basis of empirical reality is not one of deduction. You cannot use pure deduction to get to what's true about the world 
or what's true about the uh, object, at least what we understand as the objective and material world. Deductive logic is one based off of form. It is a collection of premises with the necessary conclusion that follows from the premises. The premises do not have to be true for one to have a valid argument. All that, the, all that needs to follow is a true conclusion based off of those premises. An argument does not have to be sound for it to be valid in the deductive world. Ultimately, the premises that constitute something do not have to be true. They don't have to be factual. If you want something sound, however, if you want a sound argument, then you need true premises. And premises are only substantiated by way of induction. They're only as good as the empirical evidence that supports their validity and their soundness. There is some comparative quantitative measure that has to come, or at least a general pattern and trend by some way of induction that has to be realized for somebody to come to a general conclusion and then make a deductive conclusion. Induction and deduction work inter, in, uh, in step and in tow with one another, but one cannot exist purely on an island without the other. And it's to say this, that you can say what you want deductively about the uh, nature of reality, but it has no credence and it has no um, validity in the argument of the nature of reality. Human intuition has proven itself time and time inductively and empirically to be faulty. Senses will deceive you. Your expectations, your emotions, they do not lead you to the truth necessarily at least the empirical truth. You cannot use deduction in the world to come to a scientific fact. You cannot use deduction to come to anything necessarily about the fundamental nature of reality because our minds as human beings are not, ne are not uh, necessarily set up to access it in its totality as we have had to create things as mathematics, statistical methods, quantitative analyses to get as far as we have because we are impaired in our thinking as sentient beings. So deduction is not valid. And do not try to come at me with a deductive out. Though I am very logically based and I do thoroughly enjoy and like deduction, I know very really that it has no place in determining what is the ultimate nature of reality. Einstein didn't even do that. It's not, ye, theologians, they irk me sometimes because I try and be as equimonious as I can be. And I try to be as tolerant as I can be. But I, fallacies offend me. And, um... Inerrant, errant, just erroneous reasoning, I can't stand for. If anybody says, if you hear anybody say the, that atheists have faith, or that uh, atheism is a religion, or that they can deductively prove the existence of God, or that they can use a de or if you hear them using a deductive argument to substantiate their faith, or the reason for what they believe, per se, and why it exists out in the world. Not why it exists in them, mind you. If someone wants to say, this is why I believe this, that's fine. But if, they're, but if the minute they say it's out in the world, or the minute they say this is the nature of reality, or this is the why for things, and this is what is, or how something is, or how it's come to be, that's not a deductive argument anymore. That's an empirical argument. And those, those arguments are not valid on those on these grounds. They're not the same uh, sphere. They don't exist in the same universe. They're not, they, they have an interplay with one another and there's an inter 